Greetings to our viewers at home. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. On this very day, we shall read the word of the Lord. Interpreted by the Holy Spirit, we will understand. Implement by God's grace. And we will grow in Christ. With me here today is Brother Skumbuzo Bongolo, Sister Hupusha Sisipo, and Brother Musha Karabo. I'm Brenda Nube, your host. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Brother Karabo will pray for us. No one can interpret the prophetic word without the power of the Spirit. We ask, Lord, that you may send your Holy Spirit. You know how he operates. He loves to illuminate your word and bring out beauty and help us to come closer to Jesus. May you use our minds, bind them together with our hearts, and give us something meaningful. May you also be with us, the panel, as your spirit also rests with those who are watching our viewers at home. May you bless us through this prophetic study. It is very heavy, but you have power to simplify things. We now surrender ourselves, particularly our minds, into your hands mm. and our viewers. In the name of Jesus, we pray, believing in you, Lord. Amen. 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 Welcome once again. The title to our study today says, From, from Confession to Consolation. Our memory text comes from Daniel chapter 9, verses 19. I read in your hearing. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and act. Do not delay for your own sake, my God. Your city and your people are called by your name. That is Daniel chapter 9. This is 19. Um, very interesting text. If you consider um, how the scene starts off. In verses 3, it talks of Daniel who had deprived himself of food, um, who had put a sacklock and, and, and was an ashes on himself. Mm. Uh, you know, if you read the book of Matthew eleven twenty one, it tells you this is what you, people would do this to show as a sign of repentance. And when you when you then hear how Daniel closes it off, and he writes out and says, "Oh Lord, hear!" Mm -hmm. You know, this is a sign of a man who's contrite and says, "Lord, may you have mercy and listen to us." Mm -hmm. And oh Lord, forgive. Because, in fact, that tells us, without necessarily having read through, you can somehow get a sense that this man has been asking for forgiveness. Yeah. And, and, and in fact, that the, the whole prayer is about forgiveness. Mm. He's saying, Lord, we have done wrong. And we're asking you that you, you forgive. And he, he then says two, two things. says, Lord, please hearken. Mm. And in this case, he's now pleading on God's grace and that's one of the things we'll talk about so 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 he, he talks about he closes it off and says oh lord hear oh lord forgive and oh lord hearken mm. and and he closes it off he says do all these things not because of our goodness yeah. but all because of your own goodness and i think it's a it's it, 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 that should be the attitude that we all have in our prayer mm. you know uh, many a times when we hear the you know, in Daniel chapter 2, we hear that they went out and they prayed, mm -hmm. you know, and, and God gave them, gave them an answer. Yeah. You know, in, in Daniel chapter 6, we hear that when he was in the, in, in the lion's den, yeah. he prayed. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, chapter 9 gives us a model prayer, you know, oh. for lack of a better word, Amen. a model prayer from, 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 from Daniel how Daniel used to pray. And I think a lot of us would like to be Daniels. Yeah. And, yes. and, and I think one thing that, that, that you see there is firstly the fact that uh, his actions, you know, without listening to his, his actions around fasting and how he presents himself to God, it shows how contrite and how, you know, how, uh, how remorseful he feels. Amen. And as you go through the the, the, the the prayer itself, you can only be blessed by how you know how humble the man is throughout his prayer. I think mm -hmm. uh, in that case, um, you know, when you then go to the the next verses, and all of a sudden Gabriel comes, mm -hmm. say, I mean, who would say no? You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Brother Skumbuzo, for, for that explanation. Uh, when we look at Daniel chapter nine. It contains one of the greatest prayers in Bible history. Mm. 
Uh, here the writer says, in crucial moments of Daniel's life, he resorted to prayer. Amen. Maybe we should ask ourselves, why did Daniel resort to prayer? Daniel had learned, he had walked with God, he had testimony, he had seen God at work. Daniel, at, at a certain phase of his life, sees um, his fellows, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, mm. being put in a furnace of fire. He sees the vindication of God. They are out of Amen. the yes. fire. He sees um, the repentance of the king because of that. Secondly, uh, Daniel lives also in an era mm. where there is King Daras. A decree goes out. Mm -hmm. No one is to worship any other god except King Daras. Yep. And Daniel here still opens his window towards Jerusalem. He prays, taken into the den of lions, and God takes him out once again. Mm -hmm. So this time, you will notice in the previous times, if Daniel were to intercede for his fellows, it would have been for the three hippo boys. Mm -hmm. When it was time when he was thrown in the lion's den, Daniel oh, no. would be interceding for himself. Mm -hmm. But this time, Daniel has the whole nation on his shoulders, mm -hmm. which makes this prayer very different mm -hmm. from any other time that uh, Daniel had to intercede. He's interceding on behalf of the whole nation. Beautiful. And yeah. what do we learn from this? Hmm. That on the crucial moments of our lives, when uh, challenges have surmounted and we don't understand, we don't have a way out, Daniel is saying to us, go back to God. Amen. He is Amen. the only source of relief. Hmm. It's true. That's true that. Not only that, not only prayer, mm -hmm. Daniel also charges us mm. on the centrality of God's word. Oh, yes. okay. You pray and you go and find answers mm. in the word of God. Mm. The reason he actually prayed is because he had found a prophecy from Jeremiah to say they should have been released or they should be released at the end of the 70 years. And he's troubled by the state of Israel in, where, in the Chaldeans' realm to say the reason they are there in the first place is because they sinned. And God was punishing them, and thus they were captives. They were held captives. And now it is time for them to be released. And seeing that the, the moment he lives at is the time that they need to be released, he comes and pleads with God to say, Yes, we have done wrong. But I come before you to confess our sins, to say, Because you are gracious, you are merciful, I know you will grant this to us because you have said it in your word, and you are not a man that you should lie. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, and, and one thing I like specifically about the day, you know, we could pray and ask things. But one thing that I like about Daniel is that he does not ask God things that are outside his word. Amen. Mm. Amen. And, and, mm. and at times we do that. We, we, we ask God and perhaps try to twist his arm on things that he has not promised. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. And, and in this case, I mean, there are two books that he looks at. He looks at the book of uh, Jeremiah 25 mm -hmm. and when he looks at that it tells him that listen 70 years will pass don't pray to me before the 70 years mm -hmm. only pray to me and ask for release after 70 years mm -hmm. imagine if somebody else had come on the on year 30 and says oh Lord take us out I mean the word of God was clear yeah you are going to serve yeah. 70 years yeah. so mm -hmm. that's why it says central to his prayer was the word of God. Mm. So, so you know, I've, I, I remember one time I was in a train and this lady was, was talking about how God does not like people who have uh, short prayers. You know, he says, no, 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 no. You must have long prayers. I said, but Jesus actually said, don't be like the Pharisees. You know, uh, so whenever we do things, I think we, we should just like Daniel, always back them up with the word of God. Yeah. We must not ask things purely because we feel that's the right thing to do. And then, you know, and he backs up scriptures with scripture. You know, if you look at the book of Leviticus uh, 26, where God then says, if you break my covenant, these are the things that will befall you. Oh, yes. Yes. And when he looks around their state, he realized that, what is in Leviticus is exactly what we experience. Mm. You know, so so he understands that we are here because we've broken the word of God. Yeah. And then we are supposed to be here for 70, you know. And that now, how do you then pray to God? Do you come and say, 
Lord, it's 70 years, it's done. Ah, please take us out. Or do you then say, God, I understand we've done wrong. Mm. You know, that's the, the, the centrality of it is that we should always study the word of God to understand where have we done God wrong. Mm. Amen. Amen. I think the other interesting aspect of Daniel here is that um, mm. he is in a foreign land. Yes. He is in um, a good position. Mm. He's getting all the riches of the land. But one thing stands out about Daniel. After reading the word and seeing that his people were supposed to be released, he Hallelujah. forgets what he Hallelujah. enjoys in this yes. foreign land. Mm. He yearns for Jerusalem to be rebuilt. Mm. That is his own land. He yearns that Jerusalem should be rebuilt. Amen. I want to say the very same approach that Daniel had about the then Jerusalem should be the same approach that we have when we are looking forward to the new Jerusalem. Amen. Regardless of how much we have acquired wealth on this side of heaven, mm. our longing should mm. be for the Jerusalem that is coming because we are foreign here. We are all in transit. Yes. We are going to a new Jerusalem. Yes. So we should always bear that in mind. Amen. No matter how much we accumulate, but we choose to put our riches in a land where moths cannot eat, where thieves cannot steal. Mm -hmm. And you know, while, while looking at this, my mind is thinking about the purpose for Daniel's prayer mm -hmm. as far as the text is concerned. And when you look at verse 2, it shows that Daniel now remembers the prophecy, like Brother yes. Ku said, mm -hmm. of the 70 years that they should spend in, 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 in exile. Mm -hmm. And he starts praying from verse 3. So chances are he's praying for their deliverance according to the word of God. Mm. But now we look at the manner in which he's praying. He starts by confessing the sins, acknowledging mm. that they had broken the covenant of God as a nation. Mm. So he's saying <laughs> it's time for the fulfillment. He's not relaxing and saying, no, man, God promised uh, that 70 years will lapse and afterwards we'll go home. But he's searching himself and his nation to see if whether they are worthy of being delivered or not. Mm. And these, these, these are very, you know, this is, this is very interesting that it is the prophecy and the fact that it's about to be fulfilled that pulls Daniel and points him to prayer, mm. to go and agonize with God in prayer concerning his word. And we are, we are also challenged here to study the word yeah. understand it when we pray pray in the will of god mm -hmm. we don't want to pray outside the will yeah. of god and be, uh, because when we do that the prayers are not answered mm -hmm. we should be able to go back to god and say you said yes mm -hmm. because you do not lie mm -hmm. fulfill mm -hmm. you know you, you know uh, there's something that you, that's very key you're saying there uh, uh the confession portion i wonder sometimes how many of us when when we are asking something to God, we sit and we take and put two-thirds of our prayer mm. to mm. confession mm. and saying, perhaps I am in this predicament because of my own doing. Mm. You know, when, when, when sometimes when we're praying for deliverance, for example, sickness, do we take time to say, I am in this predicament because I have not listened to how I should be living? No. You know, mm. it, we take ownership of it. Mm. We take ownership of, of, of that. And I really like what, 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 what Daniel did here. He took ownership of the state he, the nation found themselves in. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And another thing you've raised here, and I wish you could see, I had goosebumps as you raised it. You know, <laughs> you know the, the, Daniel, he, he falls out of favor in, in the later times of, of Babylon. You know, Belshazzar had put him somewhere in the corner. And then comes Darius. And Darius loves him. Hmm. In fact, to a point whereby uh, he, he, there's a time when he's going to put in the lion's den. He loves him so much. He says, I'm sure your God will deliver you. Hmm. And in the midst of that love, he does what? Hmm. He says, my people are not free. Yeah. Hmm. You know, sometimes when, just because we're comfortable, you, you, you raise that, you know, that mm. he, in fact, he was in a much better position. He had a good reason to just sit and be quiet about it. Mm -hmm. But then he remembered that his people are not free. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, uh, to your point, we should always be touched by, by, uh, uh, by, the, by the status of other people. Because there were people who were much worse than him. We must be touched by that. 
and we must be willing to intercede and not only look at our situation and say, oh Lord, you've blessed me, I'm fine. Uh, thank you very much. Mm. And then the writer therefore charges us that towards the end of this earth's history, mm. we are challenged therefore to read the word. Mm. Yes. Mm. Understand, in a world that is so full of commotions, mm. with more questions than answers, the word of God has been given to us so that it can give us answers, guidance, and make our paths clear as we prepare for the second coming. Amen. Also along the way, we need to have an appeal of grace. We need to appeal to the Lord to be continuously gracious to us. Amen. The road is very tough. We need his grace uh, to take us along the way. Now, I'm looking at particularly at Daniel here on the appeal of grace. Amen. Daniel goes to God empty-handed. He's saying, Father, there is nothing that we have done that merits us to get your favor. Yeah. There is nothing that we have mm. done as a nation that makes us deserve of, of any of your mercies, neither what I have done as an individual. Mm. Mm. We therefore, God, pray that your mercy yeah. and your grace may be made abundant for us yes, no. so that we may find escape. Amen. Mm. Yeah, true. Um, one of the things that I think the writer mentions under the appeal for to grace is the fact that uh, nowhere does he seek to explain. Mm. You know, uh, sometimes you, you could find yourself in a situation where you say, I did this because, Lord. I did this because. And I think we need to get to that point where we know that God expects this mm. from us. And there is no excuse. Mm. And and I think that's that's one of the... the, the you know, you, you only appreciate grace when you have said, Lord, I've done this. Mm. It was no. contrary. You, you have to acknowledge it. Mm. Otherwise, when you don't acknowledge it, you will never fully appreciate the fact that you've been forgiven. Mm. Because you feel that you are half forgiven. Mm. You know, so, so that's, that's, that's one of the things that really um, came forth for me there. And I suppose maybe this teaches us that whenever we, we come to God in prayer, requesting something, and especially based on his word or the fulfillment of his prophetic word, uh, we don't have to go to God wrestling with him or, or bending his arm and say, now you said in your word that you will give me this, you must give me. But rather it's grace. True. First, there needs to be an appeal of grace because we don't deserve to go to God. We don't deserve to command God to do things for us. Mm. But it's God who acts out of his love and his grace, which is unmerited favor. Mm. Let God please show grace to us. Please forgive us. Then you place your request. But we must acknowledge that God is not obliged to do things for us. But it's grace that makes him do things for us. Which takes us back to the issue of salvation. Well, the cosmic uh, scale of all of this mm. being that Christ has been given for our salvation, not because we deserve it mm. as the whole world, because we are all sinners, mm -hmm. fallen short of God's grace. Mm. But God still gave his son to come die for us so that we may be saved, giving us his grace and mercy in abundance. Mm. Okay, let's also look at Daniel. Daniel is a Hebrew by birth. Mm. birth. He knows the favor that God had bestowed upon Israel. Mm. Mm -hmm. He was there as well when he saw the Israelites reject the prophets, kill other prophets, be rebellious as a nation, and how constantly God said he would have gathered them to himself. But they constantly became rebellious. Mm -hmm. Yet when he had seen all of that, Daniel still humbles himself yes, before God and say, God, we don't deserve what we are asking for. Mm -hmm. But remember, as if God had forgotten mm -hmm. Remember, we are a nation called by your name. Amen. And Jerusalem is a city called by your name. Yes, ma'am. If you don't do this for us, we are asking you to vindicate your own name. Yes. So that the heathens around us yeah. might know there is a God in Israel. Yeah. For the sake of your name, vindicate yeah. your people and vindicate your city. Yeah. That's it. Beautiful. Yeah, okay, let me also add a scenario that I had some time back. Somebody says, if you as an individual choose to be a billboard by the highway, mm. that is a written Christ, mm. should a storm come during the day or during the night and other billboards fall, God makes sure that that billboard 
that has his name on the highway will remain standing because God does not allow humans or creatures to read his name facing down. Hmm. The name of the Lord does not belong down. Hmm. So therefore, for the sake of Christ's name, hmm. should we choose to take it upon ourselves that we become vessels in God's hand just for that. Sometimes God redeems us, not for ourselves, but for his name. Wow. I think that that's a powerful illustration. Beautiful. That's one of a, of, of a billboard. Yeah. In the sense that sometimes when you are that billboard, you don't see yourself with the content that you reflect. Mm. You, you you tend to compare yourself with another billboard that perhaps will be advertising another common household brand. Uh, and you think you're actually of the same value. True. But you do not understand True. who you mm. represent here. Yeah. And I think back to our memory yeah. verse, it says, for your city and your people are called by your name. Mm. You know, it, it goes back and to say, you know what? We're not just a common people. Mm. We are people who are called by your name. Mm. And the city that lies desolate is a city that is called by your name. Mm. So, 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 so you, you must be jealous. Mm. And I think, true. I think as Christians, we should be jealous of the, of the name that we hold. Yeah. You know, to, that God expects us to, you know, to carry ourselves into the, in the highest standards. Mm. Mm. Okay, furthermore, I want us to look at the value of intercession. Mm. Now, intercession transports us from being this, mm. this mortal, selfish being. Mm. It allows mm. us to step outside of ourselves mm. and mm. connect with Christ in a special way because intercession is not about me. Mm. It is about uh, sending somebody else's mm. issues, yes. problems, to the throne of grace. Oh, Therefore, I cannot do that when I'm in myself. I must step yeah. besides myself and try and connect heaven on behalf of other people. As if that were not enough, even when that which I have prayed for has been done, mm. I cannot claim yeah. that it was done because mm. I prayed. I can only thank God for his message. Now we're looking at Daniel interceding oh. on behalf of Israel. Mm. Yes, to step aside so, from the regular world and connect with God. So one of the things I picked up that was very interesting was the whole issue of empathy. Mm. You know, where, where Daniel uh, associates himself by using we. we. Throughout his prayer, he, he does not see, even though uh, he himself has not killed a prophet, even though he, he has not done certain things, he, as, a, as a person interceding, you, you need not say, um, I'm in, uh, God, please help Brenda, man. Hey, you know Brenda? Hey, he, he, she, she breaks your laws from time to time. You know, <laughs> that's not interceding. <laughs> that's definitely not interceding. Because you, 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 you actually become a vessel through which this person gets saved. Yeah. You know, um, and then in fact, one of the, the interesting uh, intercessions that is, that is mentioned is the one of Elijah. Yes, you know, Elijah, who after the Mount Carmel experience, uh, he then s he tells the, the, the king to say, you know what, Ahab, drink and, and, and be fine because the rain is coming. Yes. And then he goes and he prays mm. and he sends out his messenger. He says, what do you see? And you see that he goes and he prostrates. In fact, he had just proven Israel that you are worshipping the wrong God. And now he comes and he speaks on behalf of Israel. Yeah. He does not come out and say, Lord, these people, he, you know, he's part of them. And therefore he has to apologize as one of them. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes uh, I think our, our intercession, uh, I've got a, a level of ego. You know, True. when I am going to pray for somebody, I do not pray as if I am the doer of the sin. Mm. Mm. You know, we, we, we always see that the sin is yours. I'm just praying on your behalf. So I see that from, 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 from Daniel. And you see the very same thing when, when Moses was praying for, 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 for Israel. Yeah. You know, when God was about to, to, to destroy them, you know, he, mm. he, you know he, he, he becomes one with them. Yeah. And he says to, to the Lord, what will the other people do? You know, mm. say 
when they hear that you know, you know these people have been brought here to mm-hmm. die so it, moses becomes one with them so uh, one thing that is important in intercession is that we must feel the pain we must understand the depth of how god has been wronged mm-hmm. you've, you've actually brought me to the thought of how christ even became sin for us mm. he never sinned he was a spotless lamb that was then crucified for us to be forgiven becoming sin for the world that we may become righteousness unto god mm. Mm. amen yeah. and let's look at daniel and these other men that he has uh, talked about these men pray the kind of prayers that stay judgments mm-hmm. mm. A judgment has been pronounced. Mm. They intercede, and the judgment is stayed. Mm. I want us to go a little bit to to a little bit backwards to Moses, like he mm. was mentioning. God says to Moses, "These people are continuously rebellious. Mm. They grieve my heart. Mm. Step aside. Mm. I want to destroy them." Yeah. And mm. Moses says, "Lord, you would rather destroy me than destroy your own people." Yeah. Mm. So he is one with them. Yeah. He wants to take punishment with them, which is a very rare characteristic yeah. amongst the Christians. Let's look at Elijah. He is the very man who goes and says there will be no rain. Mm. Mm. There is no rain. He is the very man who goes back and to intercede, intercede on, and behalf of the, <laughs> on behalf of the nation. Yeah. And let's, let's also understand that prayers are not answered instantly. Look mm. at the, the instance of Elijah. He sends the servant the first time. There is no sign. Mm. Second time, there's no sign. The seventh time, seventh time, he then gets the sign. Then he knows Amen. there's abundance of rain that is coming. Yeah. Therefore, when we intercede on behalf of other people, let's not expect the, the answers to be yeah. always now, Profound. instant. Yeah. So every now and then you intercede, you don't see the answers. Let's continue like yeah. Elijah did until we see the let's answers. Not, let's not be wary. Yeah, and continue also to touch on what Sisipo said. Mm. The intercession of Daniel is different from the intercession of Christ. Mm. Daniel has known sin. Mm. He's been part of the sin. Mm. He's interceding for the other sinners. Mm. Christ never knew sin. Mm. Mm. He has never been part of sin. Yet he wants to come and congregate with sinners and intercede on their behalf. Then this should show us how much how much Christ loved I'm us. I'm drawn to, to, to Hebrews chapter 2, um, particularly from verse 17, on what you're saying. And it says, Wherefore, in all things, this is speaking about Jesus as the high mm-hmm. priest, the great yeah. intercessor mm-hmm. himself. It says, Wherefore, in all things, it behoved him to be made li- like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, and to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Mm. Verse 18, for in that he himself had suffered in being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. And there's another element now that we see based on what you're saying about um, the high priest and what it means. It's particularly at the intercession part. And it says Jesus, it behoved him to be like us, so he mm. can be a, a merciful high priest. Mm. That simply says offers comfort to us that because of he knows what it means like to be tempted, in all ways. He knows what it means to be part of the human race, to be Israel, like in Mm. Daniel's context. He is able to intercede for us on God's behalf. And it's an assurance to us that this is someone who knows our struggles, and it's an assurance also on the side of God and his law. Hmm. Let us also look at, um, just a moment, brothers, Mm -hmm. let's look at the joys of of Mm. intercession. Mm. When you intercede on behalf of somebody else, God fixes you. Wow. You benefit wow. while you intercede for others. Some of the prayers of certain individuals were only answered when they interceded on behalf of the others. Look wow. at Job. Wow. His losses become gain when he prays for his friends. Wow. Look at Daniel. He's made even a better hero of faith when he intercedes on behalf of, of, yeah. of his nation. Yeah. So maybe we should learn yeah. to set aside our own problems. Yeah. Think of other people. Intercede for them. Yeah. While we are doing that, God will fix that which troubles us the most. Yeah. Strange to say that because um, when the uh, uh, Daniel chapter 8 ends, Daniel has got a personal problem. He does not understand the 2,300 days. And in his prayer, he is clear that he's praying for 70 days. But God, when he answers him, 
He answers him both on the 70 days, on, on, on sorry, on the 70 year prophecy, mm -hmm. as well as his 2300, you know, as to when exactly will this, he knows that there is a 2300 uh, years that is going to take place. He doesn't understand when it's going to start. Mm -hmm. But through his intercession, to, 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 you know, to add to your point that his own personal, you know, his own personal questions gets mm -hmm. answered. So I think uh, I think that's that's the benefit of interceding. In mm -hmm. fact, I think actually being part of God's vineyard, that's the benefit of it. Mm -hmm. You know, when 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 you are working in God's vineyard, there are certain prayers you do not pray because God looks after you. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I, I remember one year when I said, "Okay, my medical aid is still." I still have surplus on it, you know, okay. because we had not gotten sick. And I did not sit down and say, God, please, you know, be with my kids that they don't get sick and all these things. So working, you know, working in, in the Lord's vineyard, it does benefit us uh -huh. in a good way. Mm. So it's not loss. It mm. is not loss. But one thing that I would, you know, that I, I would like to question, uh, to, to pose one question I would like to pose to us and perhaps to the viewers at home, yes, is how is our intercession? Mm. Are we identifying with the people that we are praying for? Mm. Or are we doing it as just as means of, sister, I'm praying for you? Or do we really get, do we feel the burden of the intercessions we are making? Yeah. Mm. Do we have empathy? Actually, huh? Do we have empathy? Yeah. Actually, our intercessions would be... Um, better off if we learned to first ask for the forgiveness of our own sins. Mm. When that is a burden to us, then mm. we will understand how much other people need relief. Now I want us to look at the work of the Messiah. Here Daniel prays an intercessory prayer addressing two main concerns, the sins of the people and the desolation of Jerusalem. Mm. And then God responds on these two pe petitions, though at this instance, God does not only answer um, give answers up to the time of Jan of Daniel. Mm -hmm. God extends the answer Amen. to the mm. end of the human race, yes. to the coming of Christ. So that prayer of Daniel covers the whole human race. The answers that apply then apply to us now. They will apply to the next generations until Christ arrives. Amen. Amen. So, so uh, you know, when you look at the prayer for for Daniel. It's about confession, about what we have done. Um, and, and to your point, he, he prays to, for sin. You know, he prays for the sins that they have done. He prays that God could restore, uh, could restore Jerusalem. Mm. But God does you know, something else. He says, listen, I, I have a plan. I have a 70 weeks plan. Yes, sir. Mm. Okay, prophetic weeks. Yes, sir. So I've got a 490 days worth of plan for your people. Mm -hmm. And and, and he, he puts a couple of things. He says, my plan is to finish transgression with you. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that at the end of my time, you guys have got, you, you've got a plan to deal with transgression altogether. Mm -hmm. And if you look at that plan, and that is when Christ comes. So, so God then says that, at the end of these 490 days, yeah. I'll give you the, the Christ who will deal with your sin problem. Hmm. You know? And he goes and he says, in fact, Christ will make an end to sin. Hmm. Because by yourself, you cannot do it. But if you then give yourselves to Christ, you are able to live a righteous life. You know, he, he, in fact, he's going, he says, to bring an everlasting righteousness. Amen. He says, I am now going to make it possible for you to live an everlasting righteousness. These are things that God has got plans for. And, and let's remember that when they prayed, when, when, when Daniel prayed, he, as much as he was asking for forgiveness, you, you, you should be asking, says, you're going to be forgiven and then what? So that tomorrow you go back to sin again. Mm -hmm. But God says, I have got a plan not only to forgive you, I've got a plan to keep you clean. Yeah. Mm. And that's actually the mercy of God right there. It says, listen, um, after that, I will then bring the anointed one. In fact, it says, I'll seal up the visions and prophecies. He says, 
all these visions that you've been having and processes, I will bring them to an end. Mm. I'll bring them to an end because the reality will be here. You know, so so all of them will come to 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 to, to, to an end, and I'll, it will also bring you to what um, and to the most holy one. Mm. So 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 you're finding God. Who, who's not only answering, in fact, he says that um, in the later in the later ones, he says, there will be a command that will go out to fix your, you know, to fix your, your, your temple. But let me talk about the other problem that you would, you know, you've been mentioning out of all these 17 verses, from verses uh, 3 all the way to 19. This is my plan for it. And I think it's a wonderful plan. And, 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 um, and I think we've got a wonderful God who, do, who does not only uh, say do not sin, but he enables us not to sin. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just to add on what Brother Skumbuzo was saying, uh, the finishing of transgression yes, becomes easier when one realizes I'm an inferior. I have a superior God Amen. that I must talk to. Secondly, mm. we can have an end to sin mm. when we realize and accept that since the fall of the human race, man has not been able to live according to the laws of God and understand that the Messiah, by dying on the cross, he is taking the failures mm. for us. Amen. When we do that, then we make the Lord, the work of the Lord easier. Yeah. And uh, thirdly, to understand that the reconciliation of iniquity is for us to accept that what we have done, what we have done does not please God. But he chose, yeah. God chose that he will send his son, Amen. spill the blood, so that he can reconcile us to himself because we don't have the ability of doing it on our own. Amen. Let's also look at the, the, the prophetic uh, uh, calendar. Wow. You see, calendar. at the end of the vision of the 2,300 evenings and mornings, the, prophets, the prophet is astonished because he cannot understand and then 10 years later, mm. Gabriel mm. comes mm. to reveal to him mm. that which he couldn't understand. And one of the mm. things that was very difficult for Daniel, it was the start of the 2,300 oh, yes. days. Yes. And I think um, when, when in chapter 9, he comes and says, all of this timeline starts from the time when the command is sent out. Oh, yes, sir. That you should go and fix the temple. Amen. See, these two things answers two things for Daniel. One, mm. it answers the 2,300 days question as to when, how long point. will this, the starting point, the starting how point. long will this thing take place? Yeah. Has it started? Is it going to start in the future? What will be the sign of it starting? Yeah. So, so now he can place, he can understand the, the kingdoms and when things, when will the sanctuary be cleansed? You know, because yes. it says after 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Then you ask, when does it start? So that question gets answered for mm -hmm. him. But then another question also gets uh, answered, which says, listen, mm -hmm. there is going to be a decree that is going to come out. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. When the decree is issued, mm -hmm. now, I think to, to, to one of the things that the, the book of Daniel shows, uh, one of the key things that, that it shows is that God is in control. Yeah. So, 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 so Daniel was never, he knew that he was in Babylon because God chose that they should be. Yeah. He knew that it was, and all these commands that have come, that have came with, with all these different kings, actually came from God. Mm. So it, it was actually going to be God who's going to send out a decree through the very same kings, mm -hmm. so 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 so, a decree is going to be sent out, and and when he when when he writes about it, um, in in verses twenty five, he says he gives uh, Daniel two timelines. He says, listen, there is going to be a seven weeks timeline. That will take you to the building of the temple. It's going to take you forty nine years to build this temple. I mean, you ask yourself. How did God know that there'll be Sanbalan who are going to, wow. you know? Yeah. But he says it's going to take you 49 years to build this thing. Yeah. Because, so, 
so it tells you that even the people that were anti the building of of the, the, the temple of God did not take God by did not overtake God. God knew about this. Mm-hmm. Not to say that he approved it. Mm-hmm. You know, so God had a project plan and his project plan, he had these risks. Mm. You know, and and, 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 and and he goes on to say, then you're going to have another um, six sixty two weeks. Yes, sir. Mm. And that will take you to Messiah. Which is four, three, mm. eight years. Yes. Yeah. So that will take you to Messiah. And from there onwards, when you add those two, you only have one week left. Mm. Mm. And he then says that in that week, um, three and a half of that week oh. will take you to Messiah. Yes. You, you know, you know, from from that 49, uh, 70, 69th week yeah. uh, up to the midst of the week, mm-hmm. only Messiah will only live half a week. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now, mm-hmm. Messiah, Christ only became the Messiah when he became the anointed one. Yes. After his baptism. Yes. So 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 Christ about eighty twenty seven. Yes. Yeah. So 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 in eighty twenty seven, Christ becomes the anointed one and he works the work of God. Yeah. Mm. Three years down the line, just as the prophecy had said, Christ dies. Yes. Mm. In the okay. middle of the seven of the week. Uh, of the seven yes. Years. And you know what's interesting? Uh, it will be cut off, but not for himself. Mm. Okay? Mm. You know, it will be cut off, but not for himself. He will not be cut mm. off of something that he did. Mm. Okay? So the Messiah will not be, you know, he was cut off for our transgression. And then after that, remember the 70-week 70, uh, 70 prophecy still carries on. There's now a three and a half weeks left. And then that took us to the time when Stephen was stoned. Was stoned. Mm. And that was when God said, my plan with you is finished. Mm. Yeah. Because now, the very same grace I'm extending into the Gentiles. Yeah. Mm. You know, um, so, so, so the, the beauty about it is that um, God had a plan for, 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 for the Jews. Mm. Okay. And beyond that, mm-hmm. what's nice is that even beyond the 70 weeks, God had another plan. Which still had, was taking place up to 2,300 days. What that means is that Gentiles are living within God's plan. Mm. So, 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 our, 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 even us, I mean, I think it gives us comfort to say God has a plan for us. Mm. Mm. Amazing. So, therefore, in a nutshell, Brother Skumbuzo, you are saying Jesus the Messiah made his public appearance, being baptized by John the Baptist, Mm -hmm. A.D. 27. In the middle of the week, Jesus was crucified, Mm. A.D. 31. And at the end of the week, end of the 490 years, the martyrdom of Stephen. And then the very same martyrdom is what propelled the gospel Mm. message to be taken to the Gentiles. Yes, Mm. Oh, I see. The word of God is amazing. Mm. It Mm. is so good. And we feel blessed to be able to read some of these prophecies, understand them, because this helps us yeah. to understand the end of time. Yes. In conclusion of our lesson, our viewers at home, they are giants. We have chosen to be vessels in God's hands to reconcile the world to himself. Giants of faith who intercede and labor for salvation of souls, some of them at the peril of their own souls. I charge you then today, beloved, let us all work together with the unseen angels and the Holy Spirit to do our humanly part and God will do his divine part. Let us read and pray for understanding. Pass the message to the next person. Pass the button to the next generation as we await in eagerness the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our next week's study lesson title is From Beggar to Victory. May the Lord be gracious to you till we meet again. God bless. Sister Sissy will pray for us. Um, let's close our eyes in prayer. Our kind and heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for this wonderful study. We pray that you help us to always be encouraged to study your word. In that way, we will always know the times we, in which we live in and thus also know what we need to be praying for. We pray, Lord, that you may always hear our prayers and when we come and confess our sins, help us to not go back to what we have done wrong when you have made it known to us that we have done wrong. We pray, dear Lord, that you may restore us to your glory 
at the end of all um, time. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.